Hi, welcome. Stacey Rosendi, Education Program Director here with you at Golden in our fabulous studio upstairs at our factory here in New Berlin, New York. Today I'm going to talk to you about GAC 900. GAC 900 is a medium to add to your acrylic paints to um, when you're fabric painting to give it a softer hand. It makes it a little bit better for the laundry. Um, so we'll talk about that. We'll do a few applications. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the uh, chat and my team here will help me out with that and uh, we'll hopefully answer any questions you have today. All right, so Todd, let's go ahead and get started. I'm here with my wonderful helper, Todd. He is our production, we'll call him, uh, what are we going to call you, Todd? Producer? Today? Okay. <laughs> All right. So GAC 900, it is a heat set fabric painting medium and that, that tells you a lot right there. First of all, you know you add it to your paint and second of all, for it to really work, you need to heat set it. Um, that's something that we'll talk about in a moment. It's called GAC 900 and a question that uh, the team gets a lot is what does that mean, GAC? And it's a big mystery and it's a really easy one to solve because it stands for Golden Artist Colors. How about that? <laughs> All right, if I flip this over, um, you can see it's a 100% acrylic medium. Um, it'll modify your paint so that it becomes softer to the hand. You know, several layers of acrylic paint can feel a little stiff. This gives it a little bit more of a soft touch. So if, you, uh, if these are wearables or fabrics that you want to manipulate in, in textile works, um, it'll make it a little softer for you. And it also makes it better for the laundry. So it's uh, less prone to cracking um, and any of those sort of issues you might see with just you know straight acrylics after a period of time. Um, it must be heat set though to work. We recommend that you put it in a clothing dryer um, for about, if it's a home dryer, about 40 to 50 minutes. If you're at the laundromat and you have a big commercial dryer, it can take a little less time. There's a few other ways to heat set it. We have a tech sheet um, or an information sheet, I should say, on painting on fabric. And our one of our trusty helpers here, I'm sure, will post that in the chat at some point. You'll see a warning that it has formaldehyde. A little bit is uh, let out when you heat set this. It's not anything to get too concerned about since your home dryer vents to the outside. If you decide to iron this and you're standing right over that iron, it would be helpful to crack a window or have some ventilation. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Whoops, I'm dropping the GAC 900 there. So this is suitable for many types of fabrics, um, even leather, which I won't demonstrate today, but we do have a, an article on painting on leather um, in our justpaint.org um, publication. What I have here today are just some various uh, natural fibers. I have a muslin, which is a very thin, tightly woven uh, fabric here, very, very thin. Um, we have cheesecloth, which is, um, you know, extremely open weave. Uh, you can see right here, something that you might use if you're collaging or doing textile arts or um, incorporating into your work in some other kind of ways. Um, then I have canvas. Canvas, you know, raw canvas, like if I'm creating a painting, or this is also similar to what you might find on a, on a sneaker or a denim, it has a kind of a similar feel. Um, like a jacket or something like that. So um, these are the three materials that we're going to look at today. But, you know, I think the best advice I could give you is to just whatever it is you want to paint on, do a little test first to see how this process works, to see if it adheres to your material, if it launders well, um, before you get really invested in making work uh, that you might want to put in the wash later on. If you're a textile artist and you're not going to be laundering the work, still test it out, but that's maybe, you know, the part of this whole process you, you may not need to be as concerned with, but you will want to test it through the heat setting phase so you know um, how it performs uh, to the point that you need it to. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward. I made a few examples here um, just to show you how these materials uh, behave with and without the addition of the GAC 900 in the paint. When you mix the paint with the GAC 900, the mixture is a one-to-one. -one. It's easy to, easy to remember, it's half and half. Um, this is chromium oxide green. Chromium oxide green, if you look here at the hand-painted swatch, is an opaque color. Um, there was nothing on this cloth except 
paint, uh, this one layer of paint, so it's, it, there's nothing to cover. Uh, if I dilute this with one-to-one -one, uh, GAC 900, it will become a bit more translucent. You don't see it here, though, because I'm not really covering anything. Um, I'll show you that in a little bit later in the demo, um, how much it does affect the opacity of the paint. This part, this demonstration here, or this example, is just to show you how, you know, this thin material just took this fluid paint into the body of the material to almost where it almost created a skin. It went right through it. So this soaked up that paint. Um, it did the same here with the addition of the GAC 900 um, as well. But I did this intentionally to show you the difference between something that has been treated and not treated. Um, one, thanks Todd, uh, let's see if I can get this straight. If you notice that on one of these, let me hold this this way, hang on, sorry, this is a little bit of a trick to show you this, but if I can get it right, oops, live, I tell you what, here we go. I need an extra set of hands. Okay, there we go, <laughs> all right. So if you look at this right here, um, the one, one of them is draped over my hand um, in a way that you can see that the, the, the fold is actually much, uh, it folds much more over my hand, right? It's much steeper. The other one is a bit of a more open fold. That's because the fabric itself is stiffer. This is the one that does not have the GAC 900 in it. This one has the GAC 900. You see it has a softer hand. It just wants to drape over my hand a little bit more. And that's on a piece of fabric that is really like loaded with this product. So, um, that is the effect you get when you have a considerable amount of paint, is it still will soften it. It'll, it won't feel like the cloth without any paint in it, but it'll definitely be softer than uh, the cloth with, you know, loaded up with paint. So let's go ahead and look at another example of that. Um, I'm going to stay down here, Todd. So on this one, um, I just wanted to sort of mimic some shredding of fabric, something that someone might want to do if they're playing, messing around with textiles and they just want to, you know, create some effects where they might be weaving or, or doing something, you know, creative like that. So I just shredded this piece of muslin and I went ahead and uh, painted it with the naphthol red light. And because it's so absorbent, it just sucked that paint right down into it and went all the way through the fabric. And I let it dry on this wax paper. I did a mixture of 50-50 naphthol right, uh, excuse me, naphthol red light okay, that's a tongue twister, um, with the GAC 900, and I heat set it in the dryer, and when I hold this up, you can see it's still kind of, you know, I mean, it's loaded with paint, it's still kind of stiff, but the edges are not sharp, whereas these are, and when I hold it up, you can see how stiff this fabric is compared to this. This really drapes, it really does have a softer hand. Now, this also, you know, if you're a creative person and you're looking at the stiff fabric going, that's really cool, I want to do that, then you can try our GAC 400, which is actually a fabric stiffener, um, doing kind of the opposite of what GAC 900 is, is uh, designed to do. Okay, so next example, whoops, uh, the cheesecloth. So this is phthalo blue, um, high flow. So I, one thing I did sort of run through here very quickly and skip is, um, the GAC 900 is compatible with our um, heavy body and our high flow paints, but we get the best result with our fluids. High flow you can use uh, since it's almost an ink-like consistency. It's wonderful for staining, um, for doing like almost like a tie-dye effect, um, but it's so, so fluid that sometimes if you're trying to create fine lines or paint with it on fabric, it can actually bleed. But in this case, that was okay for me because I was painting on cheesecloth. And this is the cheesecloth with the high flow phthalo blue and no addition of um, the, the uh, 900. So it's just paint on this one. And it, you can see it's like not really draping over my hand. It's got a little bit of a stiffness to it. So if you like that, um, you can exaggerate that with GAC 400, but GAC 900 is going to give it a really soft hand. So this one was just painted with 50-50 GAC 900, the phthalo blue high flow, and then put in the dryer for 40 minutes. And you can see how soft that is. So if I am a textile artist and I want to manipulate this and incorporate it in work, I get a lot more of a, of a softer drape. Okay. 
Nice. So now we're going to start to paint. My favorite part. <laughs> Do we have any questions so far, team? Uh, nothing that hasn't yet been answered. Oh, super. All right. So we have two examples here. This is on a thicker uh, canvas. It's actually, I think, a, a number 10 cotton duck, pretty thick. So um, what we did is we started with a white paint. Gesso is uh, quite matte, has a lot of matting solids in it. It could possibly be a little too matte. So if you wanted to create a ground layer, you could use just your white paint. Um, this one has no GAC 900 in it. This one has GAC 900. Um, this will feel something I cannot really communicate through the camera, which is why I use those other fabrics as well. This one's going to feel stiffer, and as you build up paint layers, there's the potential for cracking of that paint over time through laundering. Um, and then this one is going to feel softer. I can feel it. I can't really show you on the camera. Um, and as you launder it, it'll continue to stay a bit softer than this and uh, diminish that potential for cracking. Uh, the way that this was started was um, I went ahead and started with the bright, um, the white layer so that I could add a transparent chartreuse, fluorescent chartreuse on top. And then I used a opaque, um, the red oxide on top of that. When working with pigments that are translucent or transparent, like this fluorescent chartreuse, you will want to set up your painting so that you have a white or a bright color beneath uh, because this transparency will drive you a little crazy when painting on fabrics and you're trying to get that, that brightness. Um, if you're painting on denim or something, you're never going to get that. Even though the color is here, it's transparent, it needs that white beneath to really show up and be bright. So you'll want to plan for that in your painting. Um, if you use GAC 900 in all of your layers, when you go to launder this and heat set it, excuse me, when you heat set it first, you want to do that before you launder it. When you heat set it, um, it'll help all those layers kind of bind together and it'll soften. You don't have to worry about heat setting in between each layer um, unless you're going to prime the fabric first, which I'll talk about in a moment. So think about how you use color. Now, since we're adding 50% medium, to this product, I mean to these colors, you'll, you'll notice that even a color that is really opaque, like this red oxide, which can go on or in one or two layers here um, without the addition of GAC 900, you'll need an extra layer or so when you add the GAC 900 because the 50% medium will add translucency to that color. So I'm going to do a demonstration now to show you that. And then after I do that, I'm going to talk about um, priming and top coating, and then finally we'll end with some magic, which I can't tell you about because it's a secret. All right. <laughs> All right, so here's just a little piece of canvas with some white paint and that red oxide fluid. And over here I have my palette. I'm just going to go ahead and put some of this uh, fluorescent chartreuse heavy body out. Um, and I'm also going to put some of the fluid uh, chromium oxide out. And I'm going to mix these with 50% um, of the GAC 900. You can see how fluid that is. I'm going to mix it with my brush, get it nice and combined. There we go. If you want to not have any air pockets, you can, air, excuse me, air bubbles, um, you can mix this a little bit ahead of time. There we go. But I'm painting this in a thin layer, so I'm not too worried about that. So I'm taking this really bright color that I know is already, already, I know this is transparent, and I'm just going to show you the difference in the color as I go across the surface. You can see that even over the canvas, which is not a very dark color, you know, it's just that natural linen-y canvas tan color, um, that I have uh, already seen the color diminish. Whereas here, it's super bright. So setting up your painting for fabric uh, with these transparencies with some bright underneath will really help you 
achieve those bright colors because I could spend all day putting layer after layer after layer of this paint on here and it may never give me what I want if I don't give if I don't start with the right color underneath so it's not a fault of the paint it is a uh, it is the type of paint that it is some pigments are just transparent in the case of our fluorescent colors all fluorescents um, are dye based so there's just no way around it it has to be transparent that's just what the material does if you get a fluorescent or a bright color um, that is typically transparent the pigment and you have it in a jar and it comes out opaque then somebody's added something to it <laughs> alright so here's a color that is opaque this is the chromium oxide green that I showed you on the muslin earlier um, this is added with the 50% uh, the addition of 50% GAC 900 and as I go across the surface you'll start to see that it's not so opaque anymore it is more opaque than that fluorescent chartreuse but it's still translucent so what will happen is you'll find that with these areas that you're using the GAC 900 in in your work you'll want to maybe set them up with the expectation that you will have to either A, control your underpainting to set up for that color layer um, and in some cases where you think you might be able to build up coverage plan for a couple of layers of the paint okay all right so the next thing I want to talk to you about is this little guy right here on this piece of muslin um, I wanted to demonstrate a few things first of all GAC 900 can be used as a primer um, if you are doing fabric pieces and you don't want the paint layers to go through the fabric if you recall the uh, green chromium oxide green piece I had here you see how much of the paint went through the fabric if I actually want to prevent that and keep the paint for the most part on one side of that fabric I can prime it with the GAC 900 now this is a case where you will want to heat set it between the layers so you can put on your layers of priming um, of the GAC 900 as a primer but it's going to be kind of sticky you can heat set it before you start your painting at this stage um, and then you're good to go and then you heat set it again at the end um, these are some examples of different paint lines on a primed piece of GAC 900 the muslin is very thin and very absorbent and I only put one layer of GAC 900 on here but let me show you the results I got I do believe if you put more layers you'd get even more um, protection so here is iridescent gold fluid and I made some marks to show you you can get fine line with that fine lines with that um, this is the high flow uh, high flow tends to bleed a little bit um, in this case I was using a bit of a dry brush so not too much it's a little fuzzy up here um, these are some marks with that and then this is the heavy body teal um, on this side so as I flip it over you can see already with one coat if I put more coats I'd probably have a better result the difference from a piece of cloth that's not been primed with one that has been so I, I can tell you that I, I believe that if I had done another layer or two that this fluid probably wouldn't have gone through the high flow because it's so so um, fluid it's like ink it's a, this, this weave of this fabric may uh, even with a few coats still have that high flow come through this is why we encourage you to test so you really know what you're dealing with with your unique set of circumstances are there any questions guys no okay all right next let's go ahead and take a look at this and finally I'm going to end with an interference color I'm going to show you a specialty paint what's really exciting is you know you can use the vast majority of our paints in this context and they are beautiful so we just looked at an iridescent gold and now we're going to show you an interference paint this looks like it's clear but when the light hits it it does these crazy cool things so I look forward to showing you this I'm going to also grab my chromium oxide green so I'm going to do this on both of these little panels 
So all your painting techniques that you normally do, um, you know, you can play with them on fabric and see how they work out for you. Um, I'm going to do a glaze basically with this. I'm not after opacity. This is transparent and I'm going for it. So I have 50% of the GAC 900 with a big bubble in it right there. I'm going to pop in a second. And 50% uh, of the interference violet. I'm going to combine these with my brush. And you're going to get to see some magic happen here. <laughs> there we go. So here's the magic. As I go over this color with this GAC 900 and Interference Violet combination, you're going to see my color change. It's going to look opulescent, like a, like a beautiful opal. <laughs> so as this dries, some of the whiteness is going to disappear in this color. And as I move through the light, um, this violet op opulescent color is going to rise. So let me show you this on the chromium oxide green. It looks violet. It's incredible. And as you move through the light, that violet color will shimmer. Beautiful. So let me show you. Let's see if I can get this to do it. Really neat. So have fun with the paints. Know that there's a lot of different effects that you can get. Uh, we have iridescence, we have interference, uh, our full line of color. Um, have some fun. All righty, so thank you very much for joining us today. I hope that this has opened up some new creative thinking and given you some uh, ideas and options for using GAC 900. Of course, anytime you have any questions, you can reach out to us at help at goldenpaints.com and our tech crew will be happy to help you with whatever project you're working on. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day.